Hello and welcome to the quarterly market update for the quarter ending June 2023. I'm Angus Dockle and joining me is Steve Garth, Chair of our Investment Committee. In a period with much uncertainty, lots going on, the markets have actually delivered a pretty strong quarter and year. What's happening in markets, Steve? Well, let's start with Australia, Angus, and you're absolutely right. It's been actually a very strong first half of the year mm. and a really strong full 12 month result. Look at here in Australia, it's a 4.5% year to date, but a 14.8% for the full 12 month period. That's a really good return. Mm. The other extraordinary thing, though, Angus, is you can see the volatility going down and down and down. Mm. Now, volatility is a sort of measure of fear. So there's very little fear out there. Markets are very quiet, but keep going up. And how's that translated into global shares? What's, what's happening across the, the seas? Well, if you thought that was a good result for Australia, have a look at the international markets here. So the developed markets, and that's ex-Australia, that's up 17.5%. Now, the biggest part of that is the US, and they're up a mighty 19%. This is year-to-date numbers. But it's also strong in Europe. Who would have thought there's a war going on there, like forever? And it's even strong in Japan. And again, Japan, the economy almost never does anything, but it's a very strong first half year return. When we come to the emerging markets, not quite as good. And that's because the biggest part of the emerging markets is China. And that really hasn't kicked off after those COVID lockdowns they had. I think people were expecting that that economy would fire. It hasn't done that yet. And going back a little, uh, I was interested to understand America. It's a large part of capitalism. What's happening there? Yeah, as I mentioned, the US is the largest part of the developed market, makes up about 65%. I think most people have heard of the S&P 500 index. Mm -hmm. There's two major exchanges where companies are listed, and that's the NASDAQ, which I think everyone's heard of, and then the New York Stock Exchange, which is sort of where the older companies are listed. And you can see on the chart here that the NYSE, doing okay, but nothing flash, but the NASDAQ, it's doing extraordinarily well, up 37%. Now, here's the thing, Angus, it's really only seven stocks in that NASDAQ that are driving that result. They're calling it the Magnificent Seven. It's Apple, Microsoft, and a company that most Australians probably hadn't heard of a little while ago called NVIDIA. They make semiconductor chips, and there's a bit of an artificial intelligence craze going on. Anything to do with AI is hot, and you need the chips to drive AI. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, the daily news is all about what's happening in interest rates and our lives are controlled by central banks, depending on your perspective. What's, how's that translating into bond markets? Well, that really is probably the defining theme of the last half of the year, is the markets are trying to determine where this terminal rate is, where it's going to end. And the answer is, <clears throat> we don't know. There's been pauses, but there's a few more rate rises to go. And so the bond market, through yields, keep on reassessing where this terminal rate will be. And you can see in the chart here that in the last uh, three months, those yields keep climbing up. And that's climbing up on trying to work out where this terminal rate is. Now, when yields go up, bond prices go down. So you can see it's been a very flat return in the quarter. So that's beyond that interest rate conversation, I guess you could say that the 2023 financial year has actually been a surprisingly strong one, uh, which wraps up today's quarterly market update with bond markets seemingly preoccupied with the next six months, share markets focus on the next six years. Here at IMFG, we remain focused on your long-term future and are available to help you make wise decisions for your long-term best interests. All the best.